Hello. So this is not exactly what I wanted. Um, I don't obviously like to do digital classes. I'm just talking to myself in an empty room. That's not very fun. But COVID has made it such that that's what we have to do right now, and, and we'll make the most of it. For the next couple of weeks, this is going to be our format. We're going to have alternating weeks. So one week, we'll do a teaching like this on YouTube. And you at home will follow along by watching the video with your parents, having a Bible open, and either printing out the notes or using the online form to take notes. So that way you can keep up to date with what's going on. And then after our teaching week, the week after, so in this case, next week, we'll have a game time where we'll just get on a Zoom and play a Mafia or play some other games, and it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. So we're going to take turns. One week, we'll do a teaching. One week, we'll do a Zoom call. One week, a teaching. One week, a Zoom call. You get the pattern. This week is the teaching. So right now, if you haven't already, pause this video or... or I don't know where your pause button is. Wherever your pause button is, press it and go print out either the hard copy or get a cell phone, borrow your parents' phone or their tablet or maybe another laptop and try to open up the digital notes so you can take notes while you go along. It's going to be really important that you keep all your notes because at the end of this class, your parents have a discussion guide, some questions they're going to ask you, and you better be ready to answer. I have told them that they have every right to punish you if you cannot remember exactly what it is that we talked about tonight. So go ahead and press pause if you need to go get the notes ready. Go get the notes ready, and while you're gone, grab a Bible, and then come right back. So tonight we're going to explore what it means to be a child of God. This idea is actually really difficult to understand because there's so much to it. You know, when you consider being what it means to be a son or daughter of God, there's a lot of things that come to mind, right? It probably means that we're a lot like God. It probably means that we're really good like God. It probably means that we're good people, that we don't make a lot of mistakes. But being a child of God is actually a lot more difficult than that. In the New Testament, there are three times in which God tells us, if we do this, then we will be children of God. Three things that he says that if we do, we're children of God. And if we don't do, we can't be children of God. These three things that God asks of us are not easy things to follow. In fact, in my opinion, they're the three hardest commands in all of the Bible. Because these commands challenge us to be better people than we thought we could be. Challenge us every moment of every day to be better humans, more like God. More like God. If you have your Bible, we're going to look at the first of the three. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. I'm going to let you I'm gonna let you get there, so I'm going to stall a little bit. I'm pretty sure that's long enough. Okay, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says this. Blessings on the peacemakers, you'll be called God's children. So if you want to be a child of God, the first thing you have to be, the first thing you have to be, get ready, this is your first blank. The first thing you have to be is a peacemaker. A peacemaker. You have to be a peacemaker to be a child of God. And not only that, but you can't be a child of God if you aren't a peacemaker. And see, being a peacemaker is, that's difficult. Let me ask you, what do you think a peacemaker is? On your sheet, I have a little blank. I want you to write it down, what you think it is. Before we give the answer, I want you to write what you think a peacemaker is. Pause this video. Take a second and write down. What is a peacemaker? The Bible is actually very clear on what a peacemaker is. A peacemaker is someone who, in any situation that's possible, chooses to lower themselves and raise other people up. Let me give you an example. You have a sibling, and your sibling is super annoying, right? I have a super annoying sibling. Actually, I have four super annoying siblings, so I understand. When a, an anno uh, when a sibling of mine is being annoying, I have a tendency as a human to elevate me 
to care more about my annoyance than their well-being. Often that leads me to do things like shoving them or telling them to be quiet or calling them names, things I shouldn't do. I know I shouldn't do. Because in that moment, what I'm choosing is my feelings over their feelings. I'm choosing my annoy how annoyed I am over their well-being. And because I choose me over them, I don't care what I do to them. I can hurt their feelings. I can make them mad. It doesn't matter because I care more about me. Being a peacemaker is willing to say, this: the thing that you're doing, annoying sibling, brother, a sister of mine, the thing that you're doing right now that's bothering me, I'm not going to react. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose, instead of elevating my feelings, to elevate yours. And I'm going to let you do it. And I'm going to move on. I'm going to walk away from it. I'm not going to fight back. I'm not going to retaliate because I care about you. On a bigger scale, peacemaking is when we constantly are willing to walk into situations, whether they be classrooms, recess, the lunchrooms, whatever, and we choose, this is your next blank, to lift others up above ourselves. To lift others up above ourselves. Let me ask you this. Would you ever get in a fist fight with someone you care more about than yourself? Probably not. Would you ever call someone a name if you care more about their feelings than you do how annoyed you are at them? Probably not. Being a peacemaker means that you lift others up above yourself and care for them more than you care about you. If you want to be a child of God first, you have to be first, you have to be a peacemaker. Our second time in the New Testament that Jesus tells us what it be, means to be a peacemaker is actually in the same chapter, but it's skipped down to verse 39. Excuse me, verse 40. That's on me. Verse 40. It says this. Uh, well, you know what? Forget it. We'll read the whole section. Let's start at verse 38. I'm changing it up. I'm mixing it up. I do what I want. Verse 38. You heard that it was said. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, don't use violence. Instead, when someone hits you on the right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. When someone wants to sue you and take your shirt, give him your cloak too. And when someone forces you to go one mile, walk another while with him. Give to anyone who asks of you. And don't refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard it said. This is verse 43. You have heard it said, love your neighbor, but hate your enemy. But I tell you, no, love your enemies and pray for those who hurt you. That way, listen to this, you'll be children of your heavenly father. After all, he makes his sun rise on good and bad, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust. What he's saying here is that if we want to be children of our father, this is your next plan. The second thing we have to do is love everyone. Love everyone. You have to love everyone. Jesus says that we have to love like the sun shines and the rain falls. The sun shines and the rain falls. On a beautiful sunny day, the sun doesn't choose who gets its rays, right? It's not sitting there like, you're going to feel warmth, and you're going to feel warmth, and you're going to feel warmth, but Graydon... I hope you like cold. I'm not shining on you. <laughs> That's not what the sun does. The sun just shines. And likewise on a rainy and cloudy day, right? And the, the rain clouds are coming in and the rain starts to fall. Raindrops aren't falling from the clouds choosing who they're going to get wet, right? The rain isn't falling and saying, I'm going to hit that person. I'm going to hit that person. But Elijah, no, he's too cool. I'm going to stay away from him. No, everything gets wet. That's what happens in a rainstorm. In the same way, our love should be like the way the sun shines and the rain falls. It should cover everybody. Everyone around us should experience our love. Those who are nice to us and those who are mean to us. Those who are good people. Those who are bad people. Those who like us. Those who hate us. Those who make us laugh and those who make us cry. We have to love all of them. Like the sun shines and the rain falls covering it all. Because that's what God does for us. And that's what God does for everyone else. If we want to be children of God, we have to, this is your next blank, love everyone 
like the rain falls and the sun shines. Like the rain falls and the sun shines. So to be a child of God so far, we have to be a peacemaker, which means we need to lift other people above ourselves. Second, we need to love everyone. Doesn't matter who they are. We have to love them all. Just like the sun shines and the rain falls, we have to love everyone on planet Earth. And lastly, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'll let you turn there. Philippians chapter 2. We're going to be starting in verse uh, 14. I need a stall, don't I? It's a flower. It's a pretty flower. It's a fake flower. It smells bad. It smells like hot glue. I don't know. The more I smell it, the more I kind of like the smell of hot glue. <clears throat> Does not taste like flour. All right. Where were we? Philippians chapter 2. Yes, Philippians chapter 2. So, verse 14. There must be no grumbling and disputing in anything you do. There must be no grumbling and no disputing in anything you do. That way, nobody will be able to fault you and you'll be pure and spotless. You'll be children of God. So, the third thing that God says, if you want to be my child, here's what you have to do. First, like we talked about with the peacemakers, you have to lift people up. Second, you have to love everybody. Even if they don't love you, even if you don't, you know, even if they're the worst, love them. Love everyone indiscriminately, right? Like the sun shines, rain falls, everyone. Third, do it, this is your next blank, do it without fighting. Do it without fighting. Man, fighting is like everything we do. We argue all the time. All of us do. People argue. That's what we do. We're like made to argue. I don't know why, but we fight about anything. I promise you, I could walk into a room with 20 people and say, the sky is blue. And some guy, some knucklehead in the back is going to be like, actually, the sky is, it's mostly white with just a little bit of blue. And then we get fighting about the shade of blue of the sky. We could fight about anything. Chocolate chip cookies are great. Are chocolate cookies, are they good? Are they great? Are they the best? Well, <laughs> we can fight about anything. We do. We fight about everything. What Jesus is saying is if you want to be my child, stop fighting with people. It's not worth it. So what if someone disagrees with you? Does it matter in the long run? When we start living our life with God as our center, remember we talked about this, our last class together, the cross, right? The cross is the center of everything we need to know about the Bible. If we live with cross glasses, right? We're looking at the world like Jesus looked at the world. We look at the world like Jesus thought about us on the cross, right? So we're looking at everyone with these cross glasses. Is there anything worth fighting about? Well, probably not. You know, I like Christian hip hop music. That's what I listen to, right? You probably don't, right? You may listen to country. I don't like country. Is it worth fighting about? No. At the end of the day, Jesus died for you and Jesus died for me. Does it matter what kind of music we listen to? Probably not. I prefer Nickelodeon. You may have preferred Disney Channel when you were a kid. Does that make you better or me worse? Do we have to fight about that and argue? No. As we get older, we fight about even more stuff, right? When we get older, it's our favorite sports teams, but then it gets more serious. Who are we going to vote for in a political election? Are we going to vote for the Republican or the Democrat? Are we going to vote for Trump or Biden? And we fight and fight and fight and fight and fight. And then we fight about other things what we prefer, what we like, what we don't like, our, our traditions or whatever, and we begin to build all of these things that we fight each other about all the time. And then before you know it, we don't look like Christians. We look like the rest of the world, right? The rest of the world is the people that fight. We should be different. God says, I want my children not to fight. I want my children to lay down their arms, to not feel like they have to win every argument. To not get in a whole bunch of arguments. Christians aren't supposed to get on social media and say mean things. We're not supposed to yell and scream and shout and stomp our foot till we get our way. We're supposed to be gentle and loving and considerate and kind. Jesus wanted his children to be like him. People who choose not to fight when they can help it. People instead who choose to focus on this is your next blank. Peace and unity. <clears throat> Peace and unity. What he wanted was people who cared about staying together, not dividing. 
people who loved to stay connected, not in arguments. And we should listen to them. So what does it mean to be a child of God? Well, if we're going to try to be children of God, we have to first be peacemakers, meaning lift people above ourselves. We second have to love the whole world indiscriminately like the sun shines and the rain falls. And third, God tells us that we have to do it without fighting, keeping unity at the key, because that's what's most important. I hope this class has been efficient for you. I hope you did your notes. And if you did, parents, parents, I don't know if they're in the room or not. Parents, maybe they are now. Get them in the room and have them read the discussion guide to you. Have them ask you the questions that you have. And maybe you guys can have a discussion about what it means to be children of God. Maybe you guys could talk about ways that it can shape you and affect you today. And ways that it can motivate you to be better tomorrow. Because guys, ultimately, our whole objective is to look more like Jesus on the cross, right? That's the whole point of the youth group, to look like Jesus on the cross. And we start by taking on the image of his children, looking like his children and the way that we love and the way that we're peaceful and the way of unity. Okay, everybody, have a good night. I'll see you next week for some games. Mafia, probably. Maybe some other stuff. Yes. It'll be fun. See you guys.